So your brain actively sabotages you when you diet, like or when you want to give up smoking or drinking or want to go to the gym on a regular basis, or if you start a new diabetes management routine. Your brain will actively work against you. And whatever you want to change, your brain will initially interpret it as a threat. And in many ways, it believes that you personally are the greatest risk to survival. After all, it's you who changes, right? It's not the weather outside, it's you. So you have got to fight back with your mind. And let me tell you how powerful that is. There is a, a professor at Stanford University, uh, Alia Kron, and she proved how mindset matters in virtually every facet of our life, health, and well-being. And you can see that video uh, in one of these units. Uh, I have a link there to the YouTube video where she gives the entire TED talk about it. So if you wanted to know more about it, go and check that out after this course, after this step. Uh, it's very, very mind blowing. So she found 48 housekeepers uh, in seven different hotels across the United States and um, worked with them. Housekeeping is a very physical job. So like when you're a housekeeper, you burn about 160 to 240 calories an hour, right? Because it's so physically. Uh, yet most of the housekeepers don't see it as, as physical exercise. So what, she, what, what Alia Kram did, she split the woman into two, women into two groups. And uh, the first one uh, were uh, left with, with the belief that a work did not equal any healthy lifestyle, right? So just, just hard work. And then she took the second group and they gave, she gave her a different message. So, and she gave them a different message. So and she gave them a 50 minutes PowerPoint presentation, convincing them that their job uh, is compliant with a healthy lifestyle. So and then four weeks later, she, she worked with the groups. And what she found is that the, the, the group that got that presentation on uh, their work being compliant with the uh, uh, Surgeon General's uh, guidelines for healthy lifestyle, in fact, they haven't changed anything, right? It just worked. In fact, they lost significant amounts of weight, blood pressure, and body fat. And they also said that they were much more satisfied in their jobs. At the same time, the other group, no changes whatsoever, neither in the physiology or body or their mind. So think about that. Alia Kram changed the whole game for 24 women with just a 15-minute presentation. That's it. 50 minutes presentation. And you know, what you're going to do here now is the same thing with your blood sugar, right? You will already begin to get better results because your mind will help you to do that. You cannot just leave it to your brain. If you do not mind wrestle your brain, if you do not tell your brain a different story, you will not be successful. So here, as of now, so write down the date, the time and the date, as of now, you are changing your life and you will um, get uh, a mind or develop a mindset that help you improve your blood sugar levels and overall health. And it's not voodoo science, right? So you, you may believe that this is wishful thinking and that weight loss is one thing and managing your hormones such as insulin is quite another. Uh, well, and you know, Alia Kram thought so too. So what she did is uh, like, it's like a super cool experiment. So she brought in students and um, gave them uh, two different kinds of drinks. Like one was what she called a sensible drink with only 140 calories. And the other one was an indulgent version uh, that contains uh, 620 calories, right? So like the full, like double fudge, triple chocolate, death by chocolate, uh, kind, of, kind, of, kind of milkshake, right? I'm not sure exactly what was in it. I just like to think about it as such. So, so she gave them two different, two, uh, so, so, so she brought them in and she measured ghrelin, the ghrelin level. So remember, ghrelin is the hormone that drops in proportion with the calories consumed. So if you're not, if you're not eating for a while, 
ghrelin in our guts rise, rises, right, and tells you to seek out food, right? Uh, and it also begins slowing down your metabolism just in case you will not find that food. And once you've eaten plenty of calories, your ghrelin levels go down, right? And uh, your metabolism increases uh, because, uh, so to signal to the brain that it's now time to stop eating. Uh, so what she did is like as the students came in, uh, for the first drink, which was the low calorie version, she put like an IV in and she measured the, the ghrelin level response uh, in the body. And um, what then happened is like three weeks later or two weeks later, she invited them back for the indulgent version. Remember the 600, I don't know, 640 or so calories and uh, did the same thing. What the students did not know is that the milkshake was the same in each occurrence. The first one, the second milkshake were absolutely identical. The only thing that had changed was the nutrition level. And what happened is that when students drank that sensitive version, the sensible version, the, the, the one with the fewer calories, ghrelin levels only dropped a little bit. But when they drank the version that they thought was the high calories, 640 to fat, that's my chocolate uh, milkshake, ghrelin levels actually uh, dropped significantly. And why? Same identical drink, right? The only thing that was different is the nutrition label. So think about that. If a nutrition label of 50 minute power presentation can change how your body works, think about what you can do if you really put your mind to it. What happens when you put your mind to it? And, uh, uh, you know, tell your different uh, your body different stories. Okay, look, watch that video um, on YouTube, and um, uh, you will have some of the charge, and you, you hear it in her words in a little bit more detail. Some other examples as well. Um, I think one example that she gives is on how morphine works. That does make a difference to patients whether or not they know that a doctor has injected morphine. Um, it's not just the morphine that, that, that kills pain. So it's all in your, it's all in our heads, not just in yours and mine, in all of us, right? So, and in our heads, what holds us back is that there, we also, we have stories in our heads that we make up all the time, right? And alert us to the dangers of diabetes because remember the, the, the brain is made for survival. And so we, we look as diabetes as something that is dangerous and so you are totally focused on it, right? So when you first learned about your illness, your brain like went to a survival mode and warned you of everything that could possibly harm you, right? So the most obvious danger is that you may not good enough to handle to yourself to handle your disease, right? That, that's the first, the first fear that we all have, right? So uh, I'm, I may not manage, I may not be good enough to manage my disease, right? So the immediate focus is on ourselves. So the second danger it saw was that if we failed in keeping our blood sugar in check, we would lose our ability to function in our job, like family and social life, and hence may no longer be respected, loved or liked. So these are the two fears that we all have in all aspects of our life, but, but here I just focus on diabetes, which is uh, you know, the, the uh, the fear of not being good enough. And if we're not good enough, we're not gonna be respected, loved or liked.